prayer. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being able to wake up this morning, Lord God. And, and thank you, Lord, for this day, Lord Father, as we honor you and, and just remember a little bit more today, Lord Father, about a risen Savior, a King that still lives, that sits on the right hand of the Father in heaven, who's risen from the grave, Lord. Thank you for an empty tomb and a stone that was rolled away, Lord Father. And so we just give you the praise and the glory, Lord Father. And we just ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We'll go ahead and we'll turn. Bailey, come on out here and lead us in something. What we got? Did you just pass out this paper? All right, what number is it? Well, if you ain't got nothing but a paper, I reckon it's whatever number you got. All right, y'all go ahead and lead it. It's got a number. <laughs> Whatever 
your eyes tell you has become me This is not I hope it's not It's not the end I am making all things <laughs> Tell you has become me. This is not. I know it's not. It's not the end. I am making all things new. That wasn't the end. Amen. Well, that was just the beginning. John chapter 20. I'm going to read a few verses to you this morning and preach a little bit to you, and then we'll go in there and, and chow down and fellowship and feast together. John chapter 20. And the same story almost, but different, th different little nuggets in each story. You can read the story of the resurrection in each gospel Matthew 28, Mark 16, uh, Luke 24, and here in John chapter 20. And verse 1 tells us, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulchre. And so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. And then cometh Simon Peter following him, and he went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulchre. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for a risen Savior that lives forevermore. We just give you the praise for it. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this is the very bedrock of our faith. We've come to celebrate that this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, 13 through 14 says, But if there be no resurrection uh, of the dead, then Christ is not risen. If Christ be not risen, then our preaching's in vain, and your faith's in vain, and you're yet still in your sins. 1 Corinthians 9, 15, 19 says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men most miserable. But I got a hope. Right. Not just in this world, but the world to come. Amen. And that's what we're celebrating today. Not only is it just an event that changed the whole world, there's never been an event like it, there's never been another miracle like it, but it's a person. It's more than just a doctrine, but it's the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said himself in John chapter 11, he said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Not just an event, but I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth thou this, shall live forever. And so there's some great verses in the Bible and, and the early apostles, that's all they, they preached was Christ's death, but they also Christ's resurrection. And you'll notice here in chapter 20 that uh, nine times we saw the word sepulcher. Uh, sometimes it's, it's translated tomb. And in just 11 verses you see it nine times. And so the tomb, uh, as we recognize it this morning, an empty tomb and and a stone is rolled away. And so the tomb uh, uh, was the focal point almost this morning as they got up that, that first day of the week uh, and they came to the sepulcher uh, and they were looking to anoint his body. They were looking to uh, see the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they came there, they got the biggest surprise that they've ever had. And so the tomb this morning, I want to say a few things about the tomb this morning as we think about that tomb. And think about who was not in the tomb. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that that tomb was meant for somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know that? 
Yeah, sure it was. Matthew 27, 60 says, And they laid him, this is a man named Joseph of Arimathea, and he laid it in his own, this is the body of Jesus, he laid him in his own new tomb, which he had hone out of the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And see, this tomb was not made <coughs> for Jesus, it was made for Joseph. Friend, uh, are you with me this morning? I'm going to lead you somewhere. Listen, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, <coughs> Jesus didn't just take Joseph's place in a tomb and in a grave. He took my place. Just like He took the place of me on the cross of Calvary, Listen, he took my sin. He didn't die just for me, but he died as me. When the Lord looked down on that, he looked down and he saw me on the cross because Jesus had took my place. And not only did he take my place and took my sin and he nailed it to the cross. He killed my sin that day right there. He'd come and he nailed it to an old rugged cross. And he took it upon his shoulders and he took it into that tomb that was not meant for him. It was meant for Joseph and it was meant for me. Listen, there's a grave one day. Uh, that's got my name on it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, listen, there's a, there's a cemetery. We call them cemeteries, a place of rest. And, and, and it's got my name on it. And there's going to be a headstone on that thing. And it says, listen, you know what that headstone's going to say on mine? He lives forevermore. <laughs> there's no use putting no death dates on my tombstone because I'm not dead. I'm alive forevermore. Why? Because there's an empty tomb. A borrowed tomb, a tomb where no man had ever laid before. And Joseph Arimathea, you'll notice that he gave uh, his tomb to Jesus, and Jesus said, I'll take your place. I'll die for you. I'll lay in your tomb for three days. I'll go and take the hell that you deserve. And the Bible says that he came out with the keys to heaven and hell. He conquered death. That tomb was meant for somebody else. It was meant for me. But he took my tomb. He took my cross. Did you notice it? Also, did you notice that Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple? Yeah, that's right. John 19, 38, we didn't read that verse, but it says, And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, came and took Jesus' dead body. You know, you got to, by, listen, before you can get the resurrection graph, you got to take the, the death of Jesus Christ. By faith, Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple, he went and gathered the body of Jesus Christ. By faith, he said, I'll take the dead Jesus. Because listen, when you take the dead Jesus, when you take the dying Jesus, when you take the bleeding Jesus, when you take the cross of Calvary, you get it all. You get the resurrection too. Well, that's a bonus, isn't it? You don't just take his death, but you get it all. You take the body of Jesus by faith and you get the one that lives forevermore. Revelation says, I'm the one that liveth and was dead, but I live forevermore. Not only was the tomb a borrowed tomb from a disciple that took the death of Jesus by faith took the crucified Jesus and he got the resurrected Jesus but the tomb did you notice was in a garden yeah they put what we call that cemetery back there that's where they put us when we go they just put us in the cemetery they don't roll a stone over us they just put a headstone on us with the same symbol there but that's not where Jesus ended up at Jesus never went to a cemetery he went to a garden. That's what the Bible tells there in John 19, 41. says, Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. The Bible tells us there that uh, the first Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first Adam came into the garden live and went out dead. The second Adam came into the garden dead and went out alive. You know how it works? Listen, there was one Adam that brought sin into the world. Uh, Jesus is called the first fruits. You know why he's called the first fruits of the dead? Because if you got first fruits, that means there's more to come. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Yes. <laughs> if there's first fruits, that means there's more to come. And he's the first fruits. He's not in a cemetery. He was placed in a garden. And because he was placed in a garden, because he rose from the dead, I've got a hope this morning. That's right. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18 says, But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you saw or not, even as others which have no hope. Well, there's a lot of people this morning, they ain't got a lick of hope. Yeah. Ain't got no hope. 
uh, you walk up to town and you go to some of these places out there if you like me and you, you're out uptown and stuff and you're just kind of looking at people around and stuff and, and, and you just see people all over the place with no hope. But uh, the Bible says I've got everlasting hope. A glorious hope. I, I didn't come this morning because I don't have any hope, but I come because I got hope. I got a hope in the person of Jesus Christ. Listen, they're going. Listen, if the Lord doesn't come, I'm going to end up just like every other man that's, right. uh, that's ever lived. I'm going to the grave. And uh, listen, I'm going out, but uh, listen, I, I'm not. I'm not staying there. This old body will go back to the dust and uh, to the dirt which it came from. But the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And then there's going to be a glorious day that I've got my hope all tied up in uh, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the Bible says, listen, the dead in Christ are going to be rose first, uh, going to go up to the clouds and meet Him in the air, and those which us are alive will be caught up together. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So I've got a hope. I've got a hope. Jesus' tomb was not meant for Him. It was meant for somebody else. It's not in a cemetery, it was in a garden. You know that garden speaks of life, doesn't it? It speaks of the new blooms, it speaks of the new leaves, it speaks of fruits, is what a garden speaks of. But also the tomb had a headstone, it had been rolled away. Verse 1, we read it there, it says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, and when she came there in the dark, listen, the sun was about to come up, but the S-O-N had already been up. And listen, he didn't roll the stone away for them. Listen, for him to get out, he rolled the stone away for you to look in, so that you could see that he was gone and he was out of there. And that stone represents the barrier. It represents separation. Listen, listen, death is separation from God. If you're lost this morning, when you die, you've separated yourself from God. You're dead in your sins. You've never trusted in Jesus Christ. But if you've trusted in Him, the stone has been rolled away. I'm looking for a day when I pop up out of that ground. Listen, that's, that's a stone they can push it on over and the dirt's going to fly out of the way and here I go because I've got a hope and I'm going to live forever. And that's the promise that I have. But I want to tell you today, the stone has been rolled away. There's not an obstacle in the world that can keep Jesus Christ from you. There's not a problem. There's not a valley. There's not any stone too heavy in your life right now that Jesus can't come and roll it away. Some of us walking around, we feel like we got a stone on us. We got a burden. We got a burden for our families. We got a burden for our homes. We got a burden for our lost loved ones. And some of you come today probably are lost and you got the weight of the world on you because you got the weight of every sin on your back because you're carrying it yourself. And the past, you can't get away from it because that stone's always on your back. I want to tell you, Jesus today could roll that stone away Amen. and make you free from sin. He's removed every obstacle. Note the tomb wasn't completely empty, was it? The Bible tells us in verse 12 that Mary Magdalene stooped down and seeth two angels in white sitting on the one at the head and one at the feet. And then verse 6 through 7 that we read Simon Peter came in following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin was about his head not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself two angels have been <coughs> studying with us here on Wednesday night we know two is the number of witness <clears throat> everything in the Old Testament was established by uh, the witness of two people and, and you can kind of see it there an angelic being here an angelic being there and right in the middle, whew, one here and one there, and right in the middle. You know what that kind of looks like? It kind of looks like the Old Testament picture of the mercy seat. You know the mercy seat is on top of the covenant, on top of God's word to us, His covenant to us, and on top of the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant was a mercy seat, and the mercy seat was sprinkled in blood. And I imagine she walked in there, she seen the dead uh, clothes there he was wrapped in, all the blood and all that was there, right there where he lay, and here's these two angelic beings, one on either side, just like the mercy seat. And so when she walked in there, listen, she saw mercy had gotten up and left. Amen. Jesus is risen. Number two is also a number for unity. It brings things together in the Bible. Husband and wife. The husband leads the mother and father and cling to the wife and the two shall be one. When Jesus rose from the grave, Jesus in me and I'm in Him. <laughs> Wherever I go, 
Look who's here. I can't get away from him. I couldn't if I wanted to get away from him. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's way. When I come to the garden mm, alone, woo, where they put him, where the, where the risen Savior was putting, he walks with me. He talks with me along life's way. Somebody said that, somebody on TV said that our vice president said he, he heard Jesus speak to him and they said, well, he's mentally ill. I'm crazy as a bed bug. <laughs> he speaks to me. Husband and wife, two Jew and Gentile. The two, listen, there was a wall of partition between us. And the Bible says because of Jesus, we've been grafted in and Jew and Gentile alike have come together. The Old Testament and the New Testament have come together in the person of Jesus Christ. And those two angels speak of that in that empty tomb. And the other thing that was left in the empty tomb, we saw the grave clothes. He just rose up out of them. He's free to be who He is. He's King of kings and Lord of lords. The grave couldn't hold Him. You remember there's a similar scene in an old tomb there uh, back when He came and the Bible says it was four days late. You remember that? And He came up on His friend Lazarus. And Lazarus come, but Jesus said, y'all go roll the stone away. Y'all take care of that. And Lazarus come out of the grave, but what was he? He bound up, Dave. He's still bound up. Death is going to hunt him down in those clothes that he was wrapped in, those burial clothes. He was still bound up. And they said, go loose him and let him go. And you see, Jesus, he come out unbound. There's nothing binding him today. There's nothing holding him back. Listen, he's got a new resurrected body. Listen, he's got a body. Listen, he sits in heaven. Uh, not some spirit, not some cloud, but the nail print hands. Listen, when you go uh, and you leave this world and you see Jesus, you'll see him as he was when he came out of the tomb with a hole in his side, with the nails in his hands. Listen, he's got a body, a resurrected body. And one day, I'm going to have a body. John says it doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but when we see Him, we'll be like Him. Why? Because He left all of the grave clothes in the tomb. Do you know He left all of God's wrath in that tomb this, that morning? You know what the resurrection says most of all? Is that God was satisfied with the sacrifice for our sins. If He doesn't raise from the dead, uh, the, see, your sins are not forgiven. If He doesn't raise your dead, God's not satisfied with it. But God looked down and He said, I'm satisfied with what you've done. Uh, you're clear. And He looks at me today because by faith I've accepted Jesus Christ. He looks at me and says, you're good. In all my unrighteousness and all my sins, He left all of God's wrath against me right there in that tomb. Well, I'm glad some things didn't come out of that tomb. Some things are never going to be resurrected again. My sin is gone. My past is gone. I can forget all those things that are behind me and I can push on to the high prize of Jesus Christ. I don't worry about the past. Because in that tomb, all of Brad's past is still in that tomb. It hasn't been resurrected. All my sin, everything in my past is gone because of the resurrection. You notice that last verse. And I'll close. I know y'all ready to eat. I can smell some of that food now. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 11 says, marriage stood without the supper. And if you go on and read the rest of that story, there's a man behind it. And the Bible calls him a gardener. <laughs> well, he was a gardener because they were in a garden. He's the master gardener. And we're his husband. And she looked over there. And there's death. And there's a gardener behind it that bring life forevermore to her. <laughs> and she's standing right there between life and death. And you know where that, that's a terrible place to be. See, uh, I'm, this morning I'm on resurrection ground. That's why I'm excited. Here's Mary. She's looking over here in the tomb. And she, the Bible says she's weeping. And she's got sorrow. And she's crying. You know why? Because if you're in between death and life, you're in a terrible place. <laughs> No wonder she was crying. No wonder she didn't have any hope. But then all of a sudden, she hears a voice. And all it says is Mary. And when she heard her voice, you know what she said? Master. <laughs> Mary, 
And she said, Master, I want to tell you something this morning. The shepherd knows the sheep. And listen, I know his voice because he calls me by name. I wonder where you're at this morning. Listen, if you're on middle ground, Mary, she's in a bad place. She's between a tomb and a garden. She's between life and death. She was between Jesus, dead, and Jesus in a tomb. And between that and Jesus alive and away. Where are you at? Are you on resurrection ground? If you come this morning and you're not on resurrection ground, you've got no hope for tomorrow. No hope at all. But I'm glad that he left a few things in the tomb. But he came out. He came out. Let's pray. I'm going to ask the blessing of food. And we can just dismiss here. We'll head on over in there. Thank y'all for being here this morning. Looking forward to our service here in a little bit. Our cantata. I'm going to preach some more. We'll see how time runs. Uh, i got plenty to say. He's There's so much to brag on him about. I, I can keep it going. Trust me. I'm not spent yet on him. He's still good. He's been good all these years. Let's pray. Dear and Father, we just thank you. Thank you that you're alive and well. And we serve a risen Savior. So God, I just thank you for this morning, Lord. I'm thankful for you coming out of the tomb. And I'm thankful for the things you've left in the tomb, Lord God. All my past, all my sin, all of God's wrath against me left in that tomb. Never more to be brought out. God, you've freed me from sin. You made me alive your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the hope, the glorious hope I have one day, Lord Father, in my new body. God, I, I just look forward to the day, Lord Father, as we're no longer in these old fleshly bodies that bind us up and chain us down, but we'll be like you, Lord. So thank you for that. Lord, thank you for each person out here, Lord Father. I pray you'd roll some stones away today. That you lift some burdens for them today, Lord, through the power, through the resurrection power of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for those that have gotten up early to cook our food and uh, what a time of fellowship around your throne we're going to have. And we just pray that you bless that food. Lord, thank you for those uh, folks that came in to do that and all the work that's been done to, to get this ready. And so thank you again, Lord. Pray for our cantata, uh, our services ahead, Lord Father. You're just so good to us, Lord Father. And I'm so excited this morning that uh, you live forevermore, Lord. And we just ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.